Hey YouTube, we're going to can meatloaf. Now, this is my daughter's recipe because my meatloaf sucks. So, here's her recipe. You can use any recipe for meatloaf. She uses four teaspoons. This is 11 pounds of ground beef in here. So, I'm going to use four teaspoons of garlic salt, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of pepper and one teaspoon, two teaspoons, three teaspoons, three. Three teaspoons of Hamburger Deluxe. Can you see that? Hamburger Deluxe. It's spices and that kind of stuff. For 11 pounds she's going to use 10 eggs. Without the shell, okay? I leave the shell in the bowl. And to start, we're going to use a cup and a half of ketchup. Now, like I said, you can put whatever you want in your meatloaf. Doesn't matter. It's all going to can perfectly well. So we'll start by mixing it. I'm not sure why she doesn't use breadcrumbs. I think she does. I think she just forgot to get the crackers out. So, she'll get that while I'm mixing all these goodies up. So I just mix it up. I like to get some of it mixed before I get my hands in there and get icky icky. How many packs do you take? One. We're going to use one package of crackers. Crushed. Can you still see? Keep moving stuff around here. Okay, give it to me. Oh, no, no, no. Let me show you a quick way. Let me show you a quick way to crush crackers. In case you don't know. Don't open your package. Just start pressing them in. If the package is closed, it might go pop. But if you just press it in, you can crush your crackers really easy. And then you pour them in. Saves a mess elsewhere. Okay, so take up your watch and rings, if you have any, and start mixing by hand. And you're just going to mix to incorporate. You don't need to over mix it. Just get, all, get it all moist. Blech. I do not like playing with meat. And it's kind of like you're kneading bread. I'm just kind of squishing it through my fingers. And it's cold. So if you don't like the cold, get someone else to do this for you. Okay. There we go. I think we've got it all mixed in. Alright, so now I'm going to get cleaned up and we will can them. Okay, to put it in the jars, you're just going to kind of drop it in and you're just going to kind of do a little bit at a time. Since these are quart jars, I'm going to fill up the bottom of the jar first. And then... Uh, um, then I'm going to use my stick, and I'm going to push it down. What you got to do, and if you hold on the funnel, you don't dirty the rim of the canning jar, is you've got to get all the air pockets out. And sometimes pushing it is the easiest once you get the hole down. Just push it, and then fill the center up again. And you're going to um, want to use wide mouth jars for these only, not the normal ones, because you will never get the meatloaf out of there without chopping it up. You can do the same process for meatballs instead, and you would do it exactly the same way. Make your meatballs and drop them in the jar. They might stick together a little bit if you uh, put the meatballs in the jars, but they'll come apart pretty easy. 
or you can pre-cook your meatballs. Just remember, treat the um, pressure canning process as you would for the meat that you're doing. So this won't be treated for the beef, whether they're meatballs or meatloaf or whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, on these, we're going to give it more headspace. And you kind of have to make a judgment call. You're going to give it at least an inch and a half. I'm using inexpensive hamburger. In other words, cheap meat. So I know there's going to be a lot of grease in this. So I'm going to give it almost double what you normally would. Can you see where my fingers are? So this is where we would normally put it to. And I'm putting it way down here. And that's so the grease doesn't boil it over and explode my seal. So we're going to put the lids on this. No salt added because we already added salt into the meatloaf. And then process it in our pressure canner. Okay, now it's time to wipe the jars. One of the things I did that I forgot to tell you that I do, I make a little divot in the center. Just push it down on the, in the center and let it uh, fill up on the sides. And that way, it cooks more evenly in the center. And all the grease goes in there instead of down the sides. So you end up getting a less greasy product. And I do have one tiny pint, which will probably be overcooked. Because I'm going to process them at the same time. But it'll still be okay. It'll be a great meatloaf sandwiches. All right, now we're going to take our magnet, which I washed, and put our lids on. Remember, set them opposite directions so that they're easier to get out. And use all wide mouth jars. Otherwise, enjoy your ground beef. You should have just done ground beef. <laughs> And then screw on your bands. Since we are doing a cold pack process, it, you don't have to have your pressure canner going and boiling and all that before you start. You can just pack it up, then get your pressure canner going, and go from there. Remember, we're only soaking the lids in the hot water to loosen or soften the plastic, not to melt them pressure canning process is going to get them plenty hot enough. Okay, so now that we've got them processed, we got our canner with about two inches of water in it. Always put your bottom plate in. Put your jars in. I was reading an article online that said, don't worry about your jars touching in a pressure canner. Them knocking together, there is no chance for them to break. I'm going to put the tiny one in the center. Uh, no. Better put the tiny one on the outside. It's probably not as hot on the outside. Put your lid on. Line up your arrows. And we're going to process this for 90 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. Okay, so it's done. Pressure gauge is down to zero. The little nipple in the back is down. Pull it off. Open it up away from you. Set your lid on something so that you don't mess up your gauge. And then remove your meatloaf. Yummy, yummy. Well, oh, here come the dogs. They think it's dinner. Let it set until cool. See it's boiling? That's what meatloaf looks like in the jar. 
leave it there for 24 hours uh, make sure they seal it's gonna be a while and um, you can see the nipples are still up on them and so we did five and a half quarts with 11 pounds if I had done 12 pounds I would have been able to do six quarts so good information uh, a quart fills two pounds of hamburger and a pint is one pound of hamburger so when you want to eat this, you can just slide it out of the jar and heat it up or slice it and put it on some bread with some mayonnaise. Yum, yum, good. I'll show you when I, I'm going to go ahead and open the pint for you later as soon as it cools. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and open it and slice it so you can see what it looks like. You see how it's shrunk inside? I think you can see that. And so, it's really simple. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain off the grease. Let me walk around. You don't need to see this. But I don't think you want to see grease on the plate. And my daughter came and looked at the meatloaf when I was making it. And she said, Mom, you need to add another half a package of crackers. So we ended up using a package and a half of crackers. And this is your meatloaf. Now, mind you, this one is cooked a little much because it was a pint jar on quart settings. But slice it up. Look at that. And if you had smell o vision, oh my, I've been mm -hmm. smelling this for the last hour as it cooled. Mm -hmm. And it is just wonderful. And there you go. That's home canned meatloaf. Very tasty. Um, okay, the um, recipe person wants to taste it for the camera, so get a fork. Best ever. You're going to enjoy it.